Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live. And as we brought to you yesterday uh, our news broadcast, we were sharing with you the league that is being signed by the Jewish Congress and the Vatican. December 3rd, how the Jewish Congress actually signed on to the Nostra Aetate. I hope I pronounced that right there, that the Vatican's been working on for the past 50 years. Uh, this is a a quote right directly from the book of Daniel, and after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up uh, and shall become strong with a small people. As we said to you in yesterday's broadcast, before we even got to see this particular news article you're seeing on your screen now, uh, this has been sent to me by many friends. Thank you for sending this to me. Uh, uh, and I, I cannot even begin. Uh, one brother sent it to me from RT.com. Vatican fully recognizes Palestinian state as landmark treater, treaty enters force. Now, I, I can't even begin to tell you how serious we are looking at prophecies that are fulfilling. As I said, the league was made with the Jewish Congress when they signed the recognition of the Vatican. This was the league that was being formed by Pope Francis, many other popes that have worked on this as well, Pope John Paul II, Pope Benedict, and now Pope Francis. But now the agreement comes in on December the 3rd. The, the, the Jewish Congress, they go to the Vatican. They're, they're in a great big ceremony over the acceptance of mutual agreement and working, as they call it, a covenant. But it's actually the league. The covenant is not the covenant that's mentioned in Daniel 9.27. And some people may wonder why I say that, but it's not Daniel 9.27's covenant. This is a league. And after the league that is made, we see the scripture says that he comes up small, strong with a small people. And now we have the article today. In January the 3rd uh, of 2016, Vatican fully recognizes Palestinian state as a landmark treaty enters force. I want you to notice the wording in this, and then we're going to be going to another groundbreaking prophecy in just a moment. The Vatican announced Saturday that its comprehensive agreement with the state of Palestine signed in 2015 has come into full force in which the Holy See bolstered support for the two-state solution of the long-standing Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Referring to Palestine as state means Vatican has recognized it as an equal partner, thus sealing support for 2012 UN General Assembly resolution granting Palestine a non-member observer status. The Holy See and State of Palestine have notified each other that the uh, uh, procedural requirements for its the agreements entry into force have been fulfilled under the terms of Article 30 of the same agreement. The Holy See said in a statement on Saturday, the historic 2015 treaty is to secure rights and privileges of the Catholic Church on Palestinian territories in exchange for brokering two-state solution as well as giving more weight to Palestine, Palestine's political stance in the world. It also said to include safeguarding the holy sites in Palestine, equally important for all three Abrahamic religions. I'm telling you, this is just amazing. No, back up though. I put it in yellow. I wanted to highlight this for you guys. And, and just in case you might be having a hard time seeing this, let me take this one paragraph. Let's boost this thing on up here where I know you don't have any problem in seeing it. The historic 2015 treaty is to secure rights and privileges of the Catholic Church on Palestinian territories in exchange for brokering two-state solution as well as giving more weight to Palestine's political stance in the world. There's only one entity that can do that, and that's the Catholic Church. Yes, they do hold the world, the two keys, the world political powers as well as all the world spiritual powers, and they are throwing their weight around proving exactly that they do have all this themselves. Now, I want to take you uh, quickly over here to Mamre here. Again, we look at the prophecy here in Mamre's uh, uh, 
the, the Mamre online Bible here. Let me boost this up a little bit for you as well so you see this clearly. Let's go down to verse 23. The critical verse of what's being fulfilled as we are speaking says, And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. That's the Pope of Rome will work deceitfully. And he shall come up and become strong with a little nation. That is the Palestinians. It's not that he's coming up strong with the Jews. He just needed to make a league with the Jews. Because, see, the Jews is going to be a contentious battle between Rome and the Jews. Because why? The two witnesses are coming on the scene. And because of that particular passage, I'm about to show you where you are in the end of days. We're going to chapter 12. Now, I might remind you of one particular verse here in chapter 12. It is near the end here. Um, and, and this is where Daniel asked the question, And I heard, but I understood not. What did Daniel not understand? What is happening right here in the latter end. He says, I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the latter end of these things? Because see, Daniel 11 does cover a space of time. Not everything is in the latter end in Daniel 11. Some things are. But in chapter 12, it deals with the latter end. And it is confusing, to say the least. And he said, now the angel tells Daniel... Uh, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are shut up and sealed to the time of the end. So Daniel's own prophecy has been sealed. Many people have poked at it, prod at it, trying to figure it out, especially chapter 12. I never could figure it out for the life of me. And then today the Lord did an astonishing thing. He revealed to me about the Holy Covenant and what the Holy Covenant really is. And that is something that was interesting to say the very least. If you go back and you study the early church fathers, Tertullian, Clement, Eusebius, all of them, they all believe that the 70th week of Daniel, that Yeshua was cut off in the midst of the 70th week. Do you know that even John Calvin, John and Wesley, and uh, uh, Finney, Knox, all of them also believed that Yeshua was cut off in the midst of Daniel's 70th week, and they all believed that the covenant was the covenant made by Christ. And this is what they had believed. Now, this is something that I did not know at the time when the Lord revealed to me that the covenant was what Yeshua started in the first half of the 70th week, the three and a half years of his ministry to Israel, that he's preached to the Jews. He fulfilled that covenant. The holy covenant was reestablishing his true word of God. He reestablished the truth of Moses' own words that were given to him to lead Israel and to bring Israel back to the straight path that they had erred away from. And then what happens? For a time it goes away and it's sealed up as Daniel is told. Seal it up. Of course, now Daniel, he's prophesying of the coming of the Messiah as well as he prophesies of the two witnesses. And that's a shock for people today, I'm sure, to find out he speaks of the two witnesses coming. I'm going to share that with you in a moment. Now, but what do we see happening here? When the two witnesses come on the scene, that is when, when they arrive and they stand on this earth. And it will literally be Moses and Elijah that stand upon this very earth right here. And you're going to find out exactly why they must come. It's a prophecy that must be fulfilled. God is going to fulfill his prophecy. Now, what is going to happen here, though? They have to return. And that's when the second half of the holy covenant will be fulfilled because notice the prince that, that 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 shall come which is not the messiah he has indignation for the holy covenant he hates that holy covenant it's not a covenant with israel it is that is something that that manifested here just in the last century here when the Vatican was pushing their own ideology and got the evangelists out there all mixed up to preach a bunch of lies to get them away from the true word of God. All right, but what do we find here? We find out 
that the two witnesses are going to come. Remember, Daniel was told by the angel to seal the book up, for it would be revealed at the end time. Let's take a look at what Daniel chapter 12 is all about. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, who standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time, and at that same time, Thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Think about little brother Nathan that gave the prophecy that he gave recently after visiting uh, his near-death experience. Yes, it's over a period of time, little brother Nathan, but yes, your vision is accurate. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life, some to reproaches and everlasting abhorrence. They that are wise shall shine as the brightness of, a firmament, of the firmament, and they that turn the many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now you're beginning to see the coming of your two witnesses. See, what do they do? Jesus even says, you cannot put a lamp under a bushel, or you cannot put the candle under the bushel, but it must be out to light up the house. And see, it says, and they, there's more than one, their why shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to the righteousness as the stars forever and ever, turning them to recognize who the Messiah is, is what you have in verse 3. Verse 4, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. That shows that there would be a going away, a falling away from the true gospel that Yeshua brought for all, for all the way to the very end, in fact. Okay, And um, then he says, Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two. There stood other two? The one on the bank of the river on this side and the other on the bank of the river on the other on that other side. Here's your two witnesses right here standing on either side of the river. Now watch what happens. And one said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river, which is Yeshua, the Mashiach. It is the Messiah standing above for my Jewish brethren that may not understand of the river. How long shall it be to the end of the wonders? To the end of the wonders? That's in the compound word you're looking at here on your screen here. The hey, pei, lamet, aleph, vav, tav. Ha, pelot. The wonders. Do you know that question is being asked? How long shall it be to the end of the wonders? The question is asked by one of the two that is on either side of the river. And it's being asked of the Messiah. How long should these wonders go on? In other words, how long do we... Bring down the plagues and the things that you have called us to do. All right. Then he answers them. And I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he lifted up his right hand and his left hand unto the heaven and swore by him that liveth forever and ever that it shall be for a time's time and a half time. Go to Daniel chapter 4. You find out that the word time represents one year. So a time, which is one year, times, that's two times, that's two more years. That's three years. Half time is a half year. Three and a half years. Lines up with Revelation 11 about the two witnesses. It's two there on either side of the river there. And then the man dressed in linen, the Messiah, instructs him that it'll be for three and a half years. These wonders will take place. And he says, and when they have made an end of breaking in pieces the power of the holy people, all these things should be finished. There will be the death of the two witnesses. They break the power. Remember, it is given power over them in Revelation 11, and they're able to overcome them. And that's, the, that's that beast that overcomes the two witnesses, and they're killed, and their dead bodies lay in the street. But they do rise up after three and a half days on their feet, and they ascend up into heaven. And then the final judgments of God pours out on the earth. Now, let's go back to the question that is asked there. How long shall it be to the end of the wonders? This question is actually asked by Moses straight to Yeshua. Remember, a beautiful type of Zechariah's prophecy, the golden lampstand with the two candlesticks on either end or the two olive branches on either end of the golden lampstand there, which is none other than the prophecy of Daniel here. 
and he asks, how long will these wonders be? All you have to do to know what wonders he's talking about is drop back into the book of Exodus. And we'll look exactly so you can see, because God gave Moses in Exodus 34 a specific prophecy that was going to happen here. Let's go to Exodus 34 verse 10. And he said, behold, I make a covenant. See, See, God makes a covenant. What covenant is God going to make? It's a future covenant. It has nothing to do with the time and when Moses was on the earth. But he's going to make a covenant. This is Daniel's 70th week covenant. It's the holy covenant to restore the holy law of God. That's what the covenant is all about. All right, and he makes this covenant before all thy people. I will do not the word marvels. Even the rabbis admit they changed the translation of the word because why? They said this was after Moses comes out of the Red Sea and he's did all the great miracles in Egypt. And how could he do greater than these miracles when they realized that Moses died? Moses never did complete this. So all they could figure is that these it had to be marvels and not wonders, not miracles, not judgments. Because they said Moses died. Well, it's right there again. Another compound. Nipalot. See? I will do wonders with you. He's going to do wonders with Moses, such as have not been wrought in all the earth, nor any nation. And all the... And he says here... Um, and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord. It's a prophecy of the coming in the future. Do you know in Psalm 106, when David writes about Moses, he said that God was going to wipe off Israel for their, for their idolatrous ways that they were doing. But Moses stood in the breach and cried out for Israel. Just like Yeshua stood in the breach for Israel when they were sinning and yet he brought the covenant that Moses that God speaks to Moses about. I'll make a covenant. And this covenant is made with Israel in the future. And that's the covenant that Moses will come and reveal. Just as Yeshua came and revealed the covenant in his day, Moses will come and bring back the original words that Yeshua was speaking 2,000 years ago when he came to Israel then. All right, now, and even God gives Moses a warning in here. Watch what he says, and I'm about to do with thee, that is, it, it is tremendous. Okay, now God knew that Moses was not going into the land. God knew that there would never be another great work that Moses would do on this earth. But he prophesies that he's going to. Then he says, Observe thou that which I am commanding thee this day. Behold, I am driving out before thee the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Perzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whether thou goest, lest they be for a snare in the midst of thee. See, that's not the same covenant that God, that's not the holy covenant, just like the league that is made with the Jewish Congress. God didn't want to make a no league with the, with the Vatican. Esau, do you not know, Jewish congressman, do you not know what God said he's going to do? You even state in your own articles, your own article, you made the bold statement that the Vatican is Esau and that the latter day that, that God is going to do something great and restore y'all's fellowship back together again. Not according to Obadiah's prophecy. 21st verse. And saviors, or actually the word deliverers, Moshoim, shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. And the kingdom shall be the Lord. Well, let me tell you something. You're going to allow, you Jewish Congress, right along with the Palestinian Authority, you're going to allow the Vatican to come up on Mount Zion? You already did it when you allowed them to do the communion service there. My gosh, friends, you are seeing judgment is going to come, and it's about to happen at any moment now. My God. Okay, in closing with other news here, just let me go back real quick. I wanted to share some more serious things that are happening in the world. And to me, this is, this is incredible news as it is. The Iranian cleric Saudi Arabia's royal family will be exterminated, says an Iranian cleric. Uh, a senior ayatollah in Iran 
Ahmed Kantami condemned Saudi Arabia's execution of Shiite cleric Namir al-Namir on Saturday and said the royal family will be wiped out. A lot of threats, a lot of unrest there in the Middle East. This is the type of things that cause these Arabic nations to go to war with one another. The United States stands with Iran. They stand with uh, Egypt. We see that they work together. The U.S. Uh, stands with Turkey. They stand with Saudi Arabia, Qatar, uh, and Kuwait, and all those nations there. Uh, Iraq is starting to side more with Russia, uh, especially since Iraq was uh, uh, decimated by the, uh, the United States military. So Iraq would stand with them, Syria, Iran, as well as uh, the, the um, um, in Lebanon there, Hezbollah also stands with Russia. And also another interesting news that's coming as well is that President Putin has authorized uh, to 46 military helicopters to be delivered to the Egyptians. Now this was for the ships that are being delivered to them this uh, in the first part of the year here by the French, the, 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 the uh, amphibious uh, aircraft carrier for helicopters. And believe me, this type of ship is for a very short distance of travel. It is also a land-based uh, ship. So Russia is expecting a major war in the Middle East and they're getting their allies together as well. And this is what you're seeing, by the way, friends, all in Daniel 11. This is the wars and stuff that are going to be fought against one another. When it speaks about tens of thousands of troops that are killed there, I cannot help but wonder if this is not the coalition the United States and, and Saudi Arabia put together. Exactly 100,000 troops, 10,000 U.S. and 90,000 coming from Saudi Arabia and from the United Arab Emirates in that region there, which makes up 10,000s uh, uh, when the plural is there, which is 100,000 there that will end up being destroyed. It's very serious to say the least, and both sides are preparing for the battle. At the same time, God is preparing his two witnesses, and they will come on the scene at any time. We are, we'll see biblical prophecy being fulfilled. And you'll also notice, we'll go into this later, the Pope of Rome will be against the Holy Covenant. He will hate to see that the Jews are beginning to believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. He will come against it. He will condemn it. He will say that this was not the way that Jesus taught. He will say that this is a lie, but the two witnesses will bring back and restore that holy law the way God intended it to be. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live in an hour of prophecy manifesting daily. Shalom and good evening.